Tyler Hoover. Unbelievable. Good morning, YouTube! Aloha from Hawaii. I'm April Rose, and with me is always a man who loves cars more than he loves himself, Tyler Hoover. Accurate, yes, very <laughs> accurate. And we're on location in beautiful Hawaii. Yes, Maui to be exact. So this is our very first on-location shoot, which is actually kind of cool. Uh, we can probably write off this whole vacation <laughs> here by shooting this video. I don't know, I'll check with my accountant. But uh, yes, we're on the west side of Maui in Kapalua, which is about 15 to 20 minutes from Lahaina, where all those terrible wildfires happened earlier this year. Yeah, they're absolutely devastating. A lot of people were displaced. They lost their homes and many lost their lives. So this episode, 100% of any revenue made off this video is going to go to the Maui Strong Foundation. Which if you want to donate as well, we'll put a link below. But we wanted to visit Hawaii even though this disaster just happened, support the local economy, and well, check out the sites. And now they don't want you to go look at the fire obviously and see all the disaster. We'll drive through that today just as a quick drive through, but then see all the beautiful things that Hawaii has to offer. In addition, we're going to do the news today and react to some beach themed videos that Jake has prepared for us. So shall we get into the news? Let's do it. Okay, <laughs> so one of these is related to this trip and some annoying things that happened recently. President Joe Biden announced last month that he wants to put a ban on all junk fees when it comes to <laughs> hotels, when it comes to car rentals, when it comes to everything because it is so out of control right now. Like in this hotel, I was trying to find the best value on the nicest hotel. Right. I selected this one and there was over a thousand dollars in fees just after you click through everything. When you're about to hit the buy now, they throw in the resort fee, all the other fees. Same with the rental car, getting that, all the fees there. And then I was trying to buy a car because I can't stop myself even right. on vacation. There's a Buick Park Avenue Ultra in uh, San Francisco that I really wanted and they had a thousand dollars in hidden fees above the stated price. Right. So Biden, the FTC, they want to do away with all of that, everything up front at once. So if you want to book a hotel, it's five hundred dollars a night. Right. Five hundred dollars. Well, the interesting thing about the Buick is that you guys decided on a price, then all of a sudden you get all the paperwork, and there's an extra what was it, nine hundred ninety-five dollars yes. just written in there. What was it for? Uh, the security system fee, which is uh, like a fifty-dollar like security low jack thing that maybe takes half an hour to install. So their cost is not even a hundred dollars. They charge a thousand dollars for it. Right. Above the price, and every single car in their inventory has that. If they just advertise the car for ninety-nine ninety-five, then we would know. It's just annoying, and I totally right. agree with the FTC and Biden for wanting to do away with all of it. So I can click one thing, I scroll through, I see what the price is from beginning to end. I think. All of us could agree that this needs to happen. Well, and it also happens sometimes when you do pay, and then all of a sudden you'll see your credit card bill, and there's more fees added on there in the end. Like, there's all these hidden fees, and, and I don't understand what a resort fee is anyway. Right. Why isn't that just included in the actual price? Why does that have to be an extra fee? Well, the same goes uh, concert tickets, movie tickets. Right. Any kind of ticket you buy now, there's a fee on top of it for processing, which... Yeah, I didn't get that Buick that was traded in a Toyota Marin in San Francisco area, so <laughs> man, I'm very mad at them. And then they emailed me afterwards to let me know that they sold it kind of like as a final screw you, Which basically. I know, I know. It's, I mean, it was very satisfying for the salesman, I'm sure, because I was arguing with them, but... Uh, yeah. But there was no reason for him to email you that you that he had actually sold it to rub it I in know. your face. No Buick Park <laughs> Avenue Ultra for me, and uh, I'll keep paying resort fees until something is done, I suppose. And speaking of fees, a widely accepted fee when it comes to real estate is the 6% commission when it comes to selling your home. So 3% to the buyer's agent, 3% to the seller's agent. Uh, very accepted normal, right? Right, right. Well, not anymore, no. apparently, because it has a monopoly issue with the National Association of Realtors and a lot of big real estate groups. They're sort of struggling to keep this together to get that 6%, even though the housing market has gotten very expensive and very difficult to where we should be negotiating these fees. Right, right? Well, especially with interest rates going up like crazy. You have all these different rates and fees that you're going to have to pay now. And, and I feel like there's a lot of realtors that will go under the table and kind of step aside from their brokers and say, hey, we'll, we'll do this, I'll do this sell your house as like a side project. Don't tell the company I'm with and I'll only charge you 2%. They could lose their job for doing that, but thank goodness I'm hearing that a lot from agents that they're actually helping the homeowners and the sellers afford homes. 
That's because they don't want to be kicked out, I guess, of this association. Right. And the government has sort of seen this as a monopoly. And since mm -hmm. there's no way to get on MLS with your listing, right. or it's very hard to without using one of these realtors from this association, uh, they're trying to break it up. So this real estate group was just fined $1.8 billion in damages for this. Now they're appealing, it'll take years, but basically they're saying this is the end of the 6% commission as we know it. So now a seller of their house I'm not paying any kind of 6% fee. No, I'm no. not paying it. Mm -hmm. If the buyer wants to negotiate with their buyer's agent, whatever flat fee it is, I'm not paying it. You right. can show them the house, but I'm, I'm not paying you anymore. Right, I feel like you should be able to negotiate that fee. That shouldn't just be a set rate on how you're supposed to sell your house at. And as houses get more expensive, I mean, a million dollar house, right. that's $60,000 in fees. And that's getting close to like the average price of a house in a lot of places. Not in Kansas, thankfully, but I thought I'd look in Hawaii right? and what the cheapest listing was around us. So and, bad. Uh, yeah, look at this. One bedroom, oh, not one bedroom, it's a studio, one bathroom, 400 square feet, mm -hmm. $645,000. And that's no ocean view. Uh, at all. You just have a view of your neighbors and a couple of trees. Right. A galley kitchen. That is it. That is tiny. Tiny, tiny. The finishing, not very nice. I mean, it's just basically sort of like a hotel room, basically. $645,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That will buy you a mansion pretty much almost anywhere else except for a big major city in America. And but. then the most expensive around here, $19,990,000. <laughs> Let me see this. It's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's got to be oceanfront. That's oh, yeah. That's where you want to be with the fireplace. You got the hot tub in the back overlooking the ocean. Beautiful yard. It's only two acres, though. The okay. farm in Kansas has five acres, <laughs> although it's about half the square feet, but that, still uh, about $19 million less what are the taxes to live in Kansas. On that? Oh, I mean, absolutely obscene, I'm sure. $14,000 a year. Oh, well, that's not as bad as I thought it would be. Beautiful property, oceanfront property, uh, 14000 I thought that would be actually like, I don't know, almost $100,000 in taxes, because on the mainland, when you have lakefront property or oceanfront property, the taxes go way up, so that's not bad. That's a deal. You're right, but it does make a big affordability issue for somebody living here, like wanting to work here, or right. native Hawaiians. Uh, so they are pretty up in arms after the fires, because that was one affordable, like multi-generational area in that town of Lahaina. So there's no homes for locals to live in. There's many still living in hotels. Right. It's a really bad thing. That's why we're uh, doting all this video to uh, Hawaii Strong. But uh, one person who has made a big land grab and she's kind of infamous out here, it's Oprah. Oh, Oprah, from Chicago. From Chicago, right. she bought a uh, thousand acres in total, it looks like, in Hawaii, including this beautiful home here. And that's the thing that Hawaiians are mad about is all these billionaires and gazillionaires coming right. in and buying Hawaii. They're saying something like, you know, they're loving Hawaii to death where right. it's becoming so unaffordable, um, so overgrown with like uh, intruding vegetation right. and things that it's turning into a big issue that, well, tourists like us and people wanting to have second homes out here are causing a lot of problems. Right. I don't know if there could be a law that says you're not allowed to buy property in Hawaii unless you're actually from here, you're multi-generational from here, but there should be some sort of catch-all that helps people from Hawaii actually be able to afford to stay here. Yeah. Where else are you going to go? I, I don't know. But poor Oprah, she's been a victim of like conspiracy theories out here. Like Poor Oprah. She, well, no one's I mean, ever said that before. <laughs> <laughs> they think that she burned down the town and to like be able to buy more land mm -hmm. and she used space lasers and things and i mean it's really all over the internet these yeah. conspiracy theories conspiracy that are theories. A, a terrible mm -hmm. obviously a total disaster i know she's helped out in the with the hawaii victims and donated a lot so right. um i don't think that the conspiracy theories are true no. in this case no. but uh Kind of the wacky part of the story. And I know you always have a wacky story, right, April? Well, my Let's see what is, you have. Is, you know, I got to stay up there in the cutting edge headline news. That's where, that's what I'm all about. Yes, and what do you have? <laughs> well, there's this viral list going around. Viral list, that sounds like a disease. A list going around of the worst places to take your lady on a first date. And I just really? loved looking at this list. Hopefully it's not like a Buick Park option. <laughs> oh, not Buick, sorry. I'm getting Buicks. Well, hopefully it's not a Buick Grand National to Key West, right? 
<laughs> I thought you were saying a rather Buick. Like, yeah, I'm mixing up Buicks now. That's all right. Now, Buick Grand National is a good first date. So it's a list of places you should never bring a first date. And really? And girls kind of compile this list. It's okay. gone all around the interwebs for a while. Let's see how many times I've screwed up on first dates. It's going to be a lot. Number one, of course, the Cheesecake Factory. Oh. You cannot bring a girl the Cheesecake, cheesecake Factory. Cheesecake Factory is great. No, and I feel like it's like the menu is a novel to look through. So you can oh, even it's, pay it's attention. Oh, it's this yeah. Because you have to like study the whole thing to look through what you're going to order. I would take you to a Cheesecake Factory. We don't have it in Kansas, so please come to Cheesecake Factory. That'd be great. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. I no, love that place. Cheesecake Factory is out. It's kind of cliche. Okay. Any chain restaurant, Applebee's Chili's is on there, Olive Garden, of Olive course. Garden? What is it? Unlimited Breadsticks. Yeah, that's great. Why didn't you want, no. you want all of... No, Olive Garden is... Like, if you're in a cheesy. small town and you don't have these options, Olive Garden would be okay. Yeah. If you're in a small town, you go to home cooking, a home cooking restaurant. There was one time where I went to an Olive Garden and I ate way too many breadsticks. Like and? seven or eight. And, and what it, happened? It tore me up coming out the other side. Like emotionally or no, physically? No, I was bleeding. Um, what? You were my, bleeding? Out my rear because it, it came out as hard as the breadsticks. And, uh, can we move on? I don't know why I'm starting Did to share. Did you need a poop knife for that? <laughs> <laughs> poop knife for that? <laughs> So, uh, okay, moving so on. Don't take Tyler um, to Olive Garden. I can't control myself when it comes to red sticks. The movies. I don't understand why people take someone to the movies have, for a first date. I've done this a lot. And Seriously. It was, yeah, that was a major fail to take the, a date to the movies. Because you can't have a conversation. So I feel like it's really awkward because you're almost sitting next to mm -hmm. a stranger while you're watching a movie. Yep, totally blew it. I've done that before. And yeah. uh, it did, didn't work out. They don't know. No, no, it no. didn't work out. It's, it's never worked out then for me. Then number 12 on the list is a buffet, which kind of seems <laughs> creepy. Why, Why not? <laughs> Buffets are great. What's wrong you with you? You don't have to decide. What's wrong with you? Oh, my gosh. And then the gym. You have the gym on here. Oh. Which is an interesting first date, I guess. But, but it seems awkward because you can't really have a conversation if you're out of breath. If that's an activity you all share, True. then maybe you True. would want to do that. Um, and then last on the list is sporting events, which I feel like that might be a good first date because, you know, you have an easy out. There's a lot of people there, so you can have an easy exit. But, yeah. but really any of these places, it's hard to commit to that first date if it's a dinner because but, you're going out for a long time. You want to have a first date be a quick, like a quick coffee break. Well, Starbucks is on here for coffee. And then like Red Lobster, you get those really yummy biscuits. Don't, uh, come don't. on. No, not Red Lobster. Now, here's my ice worst. Cream? What's wrong here's, with ice cream? Ice cream dates are good because they're quick. It is on the list at number 19, but but I think ice cream okay. dates are good. And I'm not seeing like Hooters or Twin Peaks on here. I feel like that would be the top. The absolute top to not do. You know what would be great? I would love to suggest to bring a guy a strip club. to Hooters, not the strip club, but to Hooters or to Twin Peaks, just to see how the guy would react, right? Like, is he paying attention to me or is he paying attention to, you know, all the waitresses and just oh. completely blind blindsided? Blind what? <laughs> Blindsided, huh. blindsided, just can't even focus because mm. there's too many hot chicks around. Like, I think that's a good test. Yes, you should bring your girl to Hooters <laughs> if well, you're the girl asking the guy out. I strongly disagree with this list, but I've had so many terrible first dates and women <laughs> heading for the hills afterwards that uh, maybe it's it's me. It's, what, it's not the list. What has been your worst first date? Seriously. I think the worst one, well, it's got to be a second date because she had me over to her house. She cooked me enchiladas. Okay. And, uh, That's she, very sweet. First, she went through her entire scrapbook collection of her entire life. We flipped through the albums. Okay, that's a lot. That's intense. Yeah. Did she quiz you after? No, okay. no. But then we sit down for dinner because yes. the enchiladas are finished or whatever. Yeah. We're eating. Mm -hmm. Her cat jumps on the table. Yes. That's weird. Cat, get down. Yeah. The cat starts eating from her plate while she is eating. There, she's licking the cheese while she is eating the cheese. How and did you meet this her? is a total not like cat lover this, this was this was online. This was one of the few online days I did. And okay. I was mortified. It was disgusting. And this was an everyday thing, I think, for them. And I was yeah. I was I was out. How about you? I kinda liked it. I think it's sweet. Like she's sharing. No. And your animal, you know, your cat's part of your family. So that's like her family. Sharing. Oh, so what's yours? But my worst first date, okay, this guy was like a, a 
He was a total meathead, which is fine. Like, like jacked? Totally super jacked, okay. okay. And we're at some kind of diner, and he's just talking about himself the entire time. Like, I'd be like, where are you from? Do you have any siblings? And he would answer, but he never did the return question of... Where are you from? Mm -hmm. Do you have any siblings? And so I'm thinking, like, okay, he's really into himself. Maybe he's nervous. But then he proceeded to tell me, to warn me, that he farts a lot. Okay? That he farts so he's much honest. all the time because he's a bodybuilder and he has a, eats a ton of protein. Oh, like the protein, the creatine. The yeah. protein shakes. Yeah. And he gets bloated. Yeah. And, and I guess you just gotta it let makes it go. you fart just all let it go. the time. That was a test. And you failed. <laughs> I did fail. So no second date then. I didn't go out with him. He just seemed like he's obsessed with himself, which I feel like a lot of guys, when you're at the gym every single day, you have to have a little bit of self, you know, consuming your, like a little bit into yourself, maybe a little too much, like taking shirtless selfies at the gym type of guy. Oh, well, um, which, that one's way worse than mine, I suppose. Yeah. I don't know. A, a which farty one's first worse? date. Which one do you think is worse? <laughs> Well, and April and I actually had a very nice date out here in Hawaii where yes. we went around and saw all the sights, some right. beautiful things, and we rented a pretty perfect car for the occasion. So take a look at that. There it is, our chariot awaits. Yeah, I think that's Riptide Turquoise, right? It is uh, not quite Riptide Blue, but uh, yeah, 2020 Jeep Wrangler with a very loud Polaris next to it. On in. Rented this on Turo and well, it started out at fifty dollars a day, but then there you go. Very loud players, but it started out at fifty-five dollars a day, and then uh, with fees, uh, doubled pretty much. This is a really big island. We're staying on the far west side, yep. and uh, to get to some of these other amazing places on the east side, it's a three-hour drive. It's a, it's a really long drive, but it's a beautiful drive, and this is the right car to do it. Though. Yep, so let's hit it. The main highway to get east to west, which is where our hotel is, goes through the town of Lahaina, so there's really no avoiding the devastation, unfortunately. Now, they don't want us to get out, go walk around. They're only letting residents back in uh, just very recently, but it is such... Just utter devastation when you look as we're pulling through right now. Just entire neighborhoods and city blocks just completely annihilated. I mean, it looks like, it looks apocalyptic. It's unbelievable to think just in a few days, your entire life, everything you have is just gone in an instant. I know it's- Well, not days, I mean, like minutes, hours. Minutes yeah. And hours, and it's materialistic to think, but, but honestly, you spend all your time working and spending time away from your family doing whatever to acquire uh, your life and then just poof, it's it's just all gone. So they put up these temporary fences to keep people, you know, from going in and keep people, they, they tell you at the airport to not stop and take pictures and gawk and all that. We're not gonna do that. We're just driving and passing through on our way to tour beautiful Maui. Uh, but it's weird how, you know, certain spots like this, I mean, looks totally normal and still open. The way the fire just jumped around, it's just so crazy. And there's the city behind us, high from the highway. So terrible, just absolutely. Just unbelievable devastation. I think over 2,000 structures were burned. It's about like 85% residential structures, um, memorials, historical buildings. Yeah, here's the memorial up here. So it is very heavy stuff. I mean, it's absolutely terrible, but we felt like coming out here was the right thing to do. And there is still so much of Hawaii to see and obviously a massive island that's uh, very big uh, to take in. So we're actually heading to the other side of the island right now to take in a beach we've never seen before. Yeah, Black Sand Beach. So typical planning for me here, about three years ago, they decided to make uh, the beach reservation only and uh, no amount of any kind of persuasion or anything can get them to change their mind so we don't get to see a black sand beach. But it was a beautiful drive. We saw a lot of waterfalls, saw a lot of things. April, are you okay? I'm trying to get reservations online. I'm, there's no really internet. I'm working on it. April's found another <laughs> beach, but it's a different color. It's a red sand beach. I don't know what that is. Like red. Rust, perhaps? Well, we'll see if we can get in. I mean, obviously there's some conservation efforts here in Hawaii, 
and they're very strict. Were you mean to them? No, the no, I okay. just thought maybe a hundred dollar bill would uh, make a reservation happen, and it didn't. No, they totally were didn't. they were insulted. So you're supposed to give them like a little wink and a shimmy. That works in Mexico, <laughs> but it doesn't work in Hawaii. I don't want to hear about that story. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's try. No, I mean the money, not the not the wink and the oh, stuff. The oh, the shimmy. Yeah, no, no. It I guess. That doesn't look red to me. It looks black, though. It counts as black, but not a black sand beach. Okay. It's a black rock beach, okay. So the trail continues. We'll follow this random lost child here. <laughs> Tyler Hoover. Unbelievable. Whoa. Whoa. Breathtaking. You did it! We don't need a black sand beach. You want no! To... But how do we get down there? Well, I assume we climb down over there. Not that way. But uh, I should probably have both hands on me okay. as I climb down. So I guess they'll get back to us in the studio, well, in our hotel room actually, where uh, Jake has some beach videos for us. Oh no. All right, what are we gonna look at? What is this? Yeah, Jake's prepared some beach theme videos for us <laughs> from Kansas. Oh, yeah. It's a surfing competition. Oh, oh that's yes. a shark. That's, yes. a, that's a great white. Yes. And this poor man, this poor man. Is Jake starting this with someone dying? This is literally my nightmare. Like this is nightmare fuel for me. Being from the Midwest, any body oh, of he's water, okay. you, think, you think just tons of sharks are in. He's not okay. That shark is still swimming circles around him. I think he punched it. Did you see the punch? I'm sure he did. Yeah, where's the rescue? Here comes some, some kind of jet ski or something. There we go. Okay. He's in a sheer panic right now. Yeah. Okay, what is, what, here we go. All right. Windsurfing. Wind we could surfing. try this in Hawaii if we want. It is very breezy. It's really windy here. Whoa! Stop it. Was that a whale? Was that a whale that just hit him? That was him? like a humpback whale, not a killer. Wow! And it, like... Just it threaded the needle between him and the sail, and like Tyler, like he was aiming for it. What are we doing by the ocean? What's going on? What are you doing to me? Obviously, he's okay because the GoPro wouldn't have been around. Do you understand that I'm I can't even like go waist deep in the ocean, and now you're showing me these videos? Yeah, he's okay. So he's still in one piece. That whale was like just playing with him. I feel like he's just messing with him. Okay, a little lunch on the beach. Yeah, that looks nice. Ow. <laughs> You have to be careful that for that. Sweet. Seagulls. No seagulls out here in Hawaii, though, but I have had that happen to me. And kids. Really? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. You know, they just steal it out of your hand. They're very yeah. aggressive. I think that's fun. They're hungry. They need a snack. But you're not supposed to feed them. That's a thing. But that's not her fault. I suppose. She didn't know it was coming. Oh, this oh, is good. What oh, a this beautiful is good. pose here. The awkward we know it's coming. <gasps> Boom. It knocked her down. That's Stop it! Oh no! Because those rocks are. Oh! Stop it. This is making me hurt no. right now. This hurts me. Stop it! That is the worst sunburn I've ever seen. No. He will never be the same from that. Holy smokes! That's so dangerous too. That's gonna be flaking off. He looks like in an like alien. Layers and layers. Oh, but this guy's preventing it oh, here. I like this guy. He's just looking for trouble right he's, now. Well, he's spreading sunscreen he's using so his flip flop because he can't reach his back. He doesn't have anyone to rub it into he's, his back for him. He's innovative. Uh, oh. oh! She's the, really mad. The Komodo dragon? <gasps> Why'd she throw sand at him? Oh, you mom, he's so cute. dragon bitter. Maybe he just gave her a kiss with his teeth. Oh, this is, this is dangerous. This is a crocodile or an alligator. I don't know what the difference is between them. He's just taking a stroll. Yeah. How would you like that if you were just walking through and everyone's scared of you just screaming and yelling, running away? Looks like me after the buffet heading to the beach. <laughs> or after Which your I would do the buffet for a date, no problem. At the Olive Garden. Yeah. Out of the way. <laughs> I don't know why I told that story. And I don't know if it's making the cut. It's I so certainly is. hope not, Jake. It so is. Jake, you have to put that in there. Well, that was our first on location episode. I think it went pretty good. It did. Yes, I think we can take this show on the road whenever we want. Right. But the next one will be back in Kansas. But if you can donate to Maui Strong. Uh, but as always, thank you so much for watching. And April, 
It's time to go to the beach. That, and I'm staying right here. <laughs> Seriously. We have to go. No. You packed all those bikinis? No, no. People want their pictures of you no. in the bikinis on the beach? We gotta do it. It's terrible. And I have to take the pictures. It's such a hard it's job terrifying. being the Instagram boyfriend and taking these photos. Let me tell you, it is a burden. <laughs> it's so hard. And they've actually been fined 1.8 million, no, 1.8 billion. <laughs> <laughs> million or billion trillion. <laughs> I can't do it. Oh, uh, I'm Dr. Eveling here. Okay, <laughs> I know. Yeah, did you want to talk more about your Buick? No. Okay. Yeah, I did. Buick? No, I didn't, but, uh, oh, well, now I have no idea where we were. Okay, you can start over. Thanks so much. Yeah. Um, here to help. Show a little leg. That's so nice. Rare. Point eight trillion dollars in damages to the plane. The uh, trillion? Tr With a T? Trillion. No, oh, billion. Sorry. <laughs> I can't get the number right. There's going to be bloopers. All right. Trillion. Jeez, a trillion. <laughs> a quadrillion. <laughs> Subtillion dollars. All right. Now come back on my face. Come on. Come on. Come on. Focus yeah. on me. Focus on me. There you go, camera. Here you go. See, look at it. It automatically adjusts wow. back to normal there, but I have to get it to focus on my face. 